Hello, my name is Daryl Labar, and I'm going to show how to use the Outlook Timesheet Calculator, a tool I created for the XRM Toolbox that I actually created, oh, but back in 2010, uh, and I've been using as a wind form uh, since then, and I uh, decided, hey, let's throw it out here and see if anybody else uh, would like to use it. So I, I work as a contractor, so I have multiple clients, and so this was my way of having to, being able to quickly go through and put in my time at the end of the week. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, is set it up. So uh, there's time, tab, tasks, and projects. Make sure you're in projects to start with. And then enter in whoever it is that you need to um, send an invoice to, basically, or whoever it is you need to report to. So if you are not a contractor, you may just have, you know, whatever your company is that you work for. In this case, uh, I'm hypothetically saying I have a client XYZ, a client ABC, and I have internal, which would be like internal stuff for my, my company that I'd be uh, working for as a consultant. So, um, and then it's a community and personal. So those are just things listed out there just to assign things to. Tasks, for the most part, I've just cleared everything out here. Uh, the one thing that's important is make sure you set your default client. Normally, you'd have like a main client, and so most everything would automatically default to that. And then you have another one where you may not uh, may not be as obvious. So I have Outlook pulled up here, and I've just gone through and, and added some, uh, you know, maybe a typical day. You had a scrum meeting, you did some blogging, uh, you worked on Project Delta, whatever that happens to be. You had some one-on-one -on -one meetings. Again, Project Delta, Lunch and Learn, Project Delta again. You had a production deployment. You did some training, and then you had a soccer game that you went to for uh, uh, for your kids. So uh, what uh, what does this look like? So if we go to the time, and we uh, have selected the, the proper date range here, so I just have that single day, and I click Calculate Time, um, you'll see that it goes through and gives you, hey, what's the total number of hours? And at the top, you can see how many hours you worked that were billable versus non-billable. Uh, right now, it says lunch is personal. That makes sense. Let's go back to the tasks here. And we actually, let's, uh, actually, let's go back to the time. So currently, everything is under... Uh, client XYZ. If we go and look at uh, you know the tasks, these are total tasks. It doesn't matter what project they are, but here's the uh, the daily hours here, and this is for each thing. So personal. Oh, I had lunch for an hour, and then I had client XYZ. Now I didn't think I had lunch listed. Oh, that's right. I had lunch and learn, and because I went through here and uh, have tasks and have. Uh, lunch listed because that matched the beginning it just says how oh, this is lunch so that way if you have a, a task that is um uh you know project meeting for monday project meeting for tuesday project meeting for wednesday if it, if it matches that very beginning there it's just going to show up as whatever that happens to be um so you can uh, okay let's say i don't want to do, let's say i actually want to have it as a lunch and learn so i go to team back delete that back to calculate and now we will see lunch and learn shows up and it's not personal because we haven't gone through and, and defined it as personal. So let's say Lunch and Learn is actually something I do with my internal company. So I'm going to select that drop down, and I'm going to select internal is what that is. Cool. Up, oh, and I didn't do the billable right here. So billable for internal, internal's not billable. All right, I'll go back through and uncheck the billable for internal. All right, calculate. All right, now we have internal, hour, and the internal one will show up as. Um, Lunch and learn. So the idea is, as you go through and click each client, you can say, "Hey, this is what I worked on." Give that to them, and uh, and be done with it. And this will do the whole as you know, whatever date range you like to do. If you like to do week, if you like to do month, uh, whatever, put it in there. Uh, let's go back to the task here. Let's say we have some other cleanup stuff to do. So one on ones. Let's say that's only something I do with client X Y Z. So I'm going to change this to say, "Hey, um, if you see if it starts with one on one, um, let's get that right here. One on one." If it starts at one on one, then it's not client X Y Z. It is going to be client uh, A B C. And then I don't need these other ones here. Okay, uh, blogging. Oh, that was not uh, for a client at all. That was something I did uh, for the community. I like to keep track of how many community comp contributions I do. Uh, so I'm select community for that one. Uh, not billable. I don't think the community is marked as billable. Not just those clients are marked as billable. Good. Um, okay, anything else here? Um, lunch and learn, product deployment. Okay, that was also with uh, client uh, ABC. Okay, rather than doing product deployment, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to say, um, hey, let's prefix with ABC. Okay. And I'm going to put a star here. And I'm going to put a star here as well. So the star here, because I have that star, it's going to match and it's going to include it not uh, go through and uh, remove the, the text for it. So now if I go back, uh, ABC is going to be with this one, not client XYZ, but with ABC. OK. 
Okay, let's go back to Outlook. So this is just a, a simple way. If you have a couple of clients, hey, let's go ahead and fix that one. So I'm going to rename this to um, ABC. Cool. Now if I go back and run my time tool. All right, so now we have a little more hours here. here. Community, we have half an hour. We blogged. Uh, ABC, we had these one-on-ones. Those all show up. And ABC uh, production deployment. Great. Uh, again, if I remove that star, they would show up just one-on-one -on -one and, and be grouped together, whether that's the way you want to do it, whatever way you'd like. Uh, client XYZ, um, yeah, four, four and a half hours, Scrum, Project, Delta, and Training. Oh, Training wasn't that either. Training was actually uh, the different one. So let's go back to Task. Training is actually going to be for the uh, internal. Okay. Uh, go back. Cool. All right. So we see I had five and a half hours billable. This is this is basically you know, your day at the glance. What, what is everything here? Okay, cool. Um, so uh, tomorrow I can go in and say, all right, uh, I have a new project. I worked on this in the morning. All right, that's it. Let's say I had a good morning. I worked on all that together. Boom. All right. I can go back and select the next day here to do the end range. All right. And now we see, oh, we have four hours for that. So um, yeah, just a quick tool to go through and, and do that. And then at the end of the week, you can say, all right, hey, client ABC, I'm going to copy this. There's client ABC, client XYZ. Here's what I worked on. Uh, totals listed up there. Community, all right, here's my community hours. And then internal hours, things I did for maybe the internal companies there. So you can go through and, and divide that up however you'd like to. And then there's also a, a task total. So if you want to know, you know, how long did I work on this task over the week? Uh, that's just a little summary for you there. So, uh, yeah, so that's the tool in a nutshell. Um, it just sucks everything out of Outlook. Uh, it works on my machine. I don't, I mean, the the integration of Outlook's kind of weird for different versions. So maybe your version won't work. Um I don't know, uh, but if it works, great. Um, and if you can get stuff to pull up in here, then that'll, that'll work great as well. Uh, the one thing that's kind of weird is if you make things that are not quite, you know, even increments. Uh, let's say you make something that's, you start at 805. That's kind of annoying, but let's say you do that. All right, so rather than being, you know, four hours exactly, it's going to be a fraction of hours. So you'll see some weird stuff like that. So if you see that, oh, what is that? Oh, uh, okay, this one thing isn't, isn't exact. So go in and, and readjust that if you need to. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Play around with whatever you want. You can delete the tasks out. You can leave them in there. Um, the, there's the projects. Tasks are sorted by project first and then by alphabetical. So if you're having trouble finding something, um, and right now it's, oh, it's under XYZ. First you need to go find the XYZ projects and then find the tasks sorted alphabetical in that. Um, yeah, add whatever you want. You don't have to pull it in from Outlook. You can add it in here first if you'd like. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's that should be about it. Delete whatever you want. They're all stored in the, um, this is all stored in files in the uh, XM Toolbox directory here. So you go to settings, uh, the paths, there we go. And then there's the storage folder. You want to go to settings. And then you'd want to go to the Outlook timesheet calculator. And here we have projects, XML, and tasks, XML. Uh, it's just a list of all the stuff in here. Um, yeah, uh, just GUIDs and names and billable values. It's pretty simple. So if you are really into XML, you can edit that manually if you'd like. Um, or if you had to delete a lot, you might want to go in here and delete it all. Or maybe you want to give it to somebody else. Say, here, here's my settings. Uh, you can use this for a project as well. Um, you can share those and edit those by hand if you'd like. So um, that's about it. Uh, hopefully you find the tool useful and uh, makes your life a little bit easier. Um, it, I know it definitely has mine in the life of a consultant. Uh, yep, yeah, very helpful um, to do that kind of stuff. So, oh, one other thing. So uh, if you do happen to have things that overlap, which is fairly common. Let's say that um, the Scrum went this long, but you have a blog for that one. So those, this, you know, this would be actually meetings. What happens is it will go through and it will do the full length here, and then ha uh, then that one there. So I'm going to delete this one for now since it's that weird fraction. And so you'll see that the um, blog became a quarter of an hour uh, because this one took precedence because it started first. So if you need to go through and change that you can do that but whatever one starts first is the one that wins when you have um, anything that overlaps so you may kind of at the end of the day just go through and, and 
update that to make sure it all makes sense what you want. Oh, did I get soccer game in here? Oh, yeah. Uh, any out of the office stuff uh, is not included uh, by default because uh, if you're listed as out of the office, then you probably don't actually need to have anything for that. Um, so, yeah, that would be um, one in there. But let's say you weren't out of the office. Let's say you were, you know, marked as free for that soccer game. Just a reminder, hey, you need to leave. Um, then you probably would want to set that up as a um, set that up as a personal item here. Soccer game. Personal. Yep. Go through. Run. So at the end of the day, just run through. Make sure the hours look what you uh, assume them to be. And then you're good to go at the end of the week or whenever your reporting period is. You can click calculate time and pull all your hours out. Copy, paste, done. Easy as that. Hope that was helpful. Have a good one.